This is the Nazmus Labs podcast. My name is Nazmus Shakib Kandekar and welcome to episode 1. This is our first episode and it was recorded on April 10th of 2016. How are you doing everyone? It's currently uh, 1 p.m. So it is right afternoon. It's been afternoon for a while and um, I'm ready to get started. Um, so I hope you're ready to join me. Uh, we're going to talk about Microsoft Edge and this podcast is usually about technology and mostly about Microsoft Windows sometimes about development technical stuff and also about other things tech um, and um, I want to start talking about with Microsoft Edge because that's what I promised on our zeroth episode that was our first preview episode it had no content it was just an introduction of this podcast uh, but this is the, the actual first episode and I want to talk about Microsoft Edge. Um, so what it what what is it that I want to talk about Microsoft Edge? It is a new browser, as you may have already known. It's a new browser that uh, Microsoft shifts with Windows 10. Um, it uh, and it's uh, it it comes with Windows 10, but it does not replace Internet Explorer. It does replace Internet Explorer as the default browser, but the Internet Explorer browser continues to live on in Windows 10. Um, as a legacy browser, as a browser that's designed to retain compatibility of past 20 years of technology that is obsolete but still necessary in inter enterprise environment where uh, they use older software that require those older technologies. Uh, Microsoft Edge is supposed to break away from that older technology and it's supposed to be a new browser with fully modern, using fully modern standards, updated plugin model that's uh, very similar to how Chrome works in terms of plugins and extensions and it has uh, yeah it strips away all those outdated technologies that Internet Explorer used, uses and um, it's very modern so um, and it's it's so it's, it's a browser built on scratch uh, and there are some things that people wonder I have people things people question about when, when it comes to Microsoft Edge um, one of the questions that people ask is uh, is Microsoft Edge really a browser built from scratch? Is it really completely different from Internet Explorer? Um, it, the answer is yes and no. Um, let's uh, let's do the cook. The, let's do the easy one. Uh, yes, it is a browser that the UI part of it, the browser that you see, the browser that has a new tab page and the reload button and the menu buttons, the UI part of the browser. Yes, that is completely lit, written from scratch. The address bar, the favorites, everything is written from scratch. Uh, it has nothing to do with Internet Explorer. They stripped away, they, they rewrote the entire look and feel of the browser using a modern modern platform. They call it the Universal Windows Platform, UWP. Um, yes, that is written from scratch. But if you're talking about the engine, um, the browsing and the rendering engine, the, the main brain of the browser that displays the web page, that engine is not written from scratch. So uh, the engine is uh, the was Internet Explorer's biggest uh, complaint point. Um, for years, Internet Explorer was behind standards, so uh, it it had a hard time displaying uh, modern web pages in the past because the engine itself was not good. It was not. It was not. It was becoming outdated, and due to lack of competition in the past, Microsoft stalled in active development of the Internet Explorer's browsing browsing engine. Uh, until Firefox and Chrome beca uh, became a really huge competition for Microsoft with better web rendering engines, web uh, web rendering engines that Internet Explorer and Microsoft decided to pick up their speed because with Firefox and especially Chrome, their engine was faster, their engine was more modern, and their engine actually did a great job displaying modern web pages. And Microsoft realized that people were switching to the newer browsers because they gave better experiences. And that's when, starting with Internet Explorer 8, and especially with Internet Explorer 9, Microsoft really made a great effort in making... Microsoft really made a great effort in making um, a really good engine uh, for... Uh, or actually, they added a lot of improvements. They made the engine more modern, faster, uh, they they added video acceleration capabilities to make the engine really good and be able to compete with the newer browsers. And even with Internet Explorer 10 and especially 11, it became really, really good. Um, but there were still problems. Two problems, actually. Uh, first, the name Internet Explorer has become a really bad name. 
for users because when they think about an explorer they remember all these years of horrible uh, reputation of the browser being bad so that's hard to get rid of first impressions matter don't they especially long-term impression uh, also the second point part, part is yes the engine was really modern and uh, was becoming modern and with uh, started adding in all the newer technologies uh, it still had the had to support all the older stuff that became outdated and no no, no longer necessary why well, because lots of lots of older software, especially those in, used in inner uh, enterprises and other businesses, or even websites like the internal websites, they call it the intranet, uh, the websites, uh, int intranet websites that uh, those companies u use uses. Uh, a lot of them still rely on the outdated technologies of the older browsers. And if Internet Explorer just uh, removed all the older stuff. Um, how would the, those uh, st software stop working? And that would mean no one would be upgrading to Windows 10. So Microsoft decided the solution was to keep Internet Explorer as it is. Uh, after they upgraded to Internet Explorer 11 in Windows 8.1, they decided to um, um, not continue developing the engine of Internet Explorer 11 and keep it uh, uh, basically set that in stone. So that 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 would stop being developed. Uh, and they decided to make a copy of the Internet Explorer 11 engine. They call it a fork in software development because it forks out from the main engine. And they copied it and they renamed that engine. Uh, the in engine for Internet Explorer is called Trident. And the engine for Edge, Microsoft Edge, uh, is called the Edge HTML. So basically what happened is when they, co they co made a copy of the Internet Explorer's engine, so exact copy, and they 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 renamed that engine, that Trident engine, to Edge HTML. And what this was before the name of the browser Microsoft Edge existed. Microsoft was um, re renamed that engine, and they stripped away all the old stuff from the copied engine. They kept the Internet Explorer's original, the main engine intact, but they they since they copied it, they got rid of all the older technologies, they stripped away all the older technologies and just kept the modern stuff. And then for, on top of that, they improved the uh, newer technologies by adding more support for uh, modern standards. And so the new engine's called Edge to HTML, but they didn't have a name for the new browser. Uh, they're writing from scratch. Uh, at that time, it was called Project Spartan. But eventually, through a survey, there was a survey, that uh, internal survey that ask people what kind of um, what the name should be uh, uh, what the name for the new browser should be and a lot of names was, uh, was tossed around and a few I remember was uh, Edge was one of them and another one was inner Microsoft Internet Explorer actually there was Edge there was Microsoft Edge there's uh, Erica I think I can't remember I can't be sure but all of them start with the E I'll tell you that uh, there was another one that's I found it funny that's called Inter Internet Explorer Edge. That is, and there's another one that says IE Edge, IE Edge, IE for Internet Explorer. <laughs> uh, for some, uh, for obvious reasons, I guess those names didn't get picked. So the final name of the browser was announced and built 2015, uh, year almost a year ago. Actually, a year ago, almost a year ago bef uh, from today. And they re they revealed the name of the browser was as Microsoft Edge. Uh, before that, it was known by the code name Project Spartan. And um, yes, so from now on, we have two browsers in Windows 10. One is a uh, one that's set, one is one that is set as a time capsule. It will no longer be updated in terms of the engine and stuff and the big UI features. It'll stay how it is for indefinitely um, uh, as Internet Explorer 11. And there's also Microsoft Edge. Now, Internet Explorer 11 will continue to get security updates, but other than that, it's it's how it's going to remain like this until it dies, I guess. Uh, but there's also Edge on Windows 10. And so, to answer the question, is Edge basically Microsoft Internet Explorer 12? Um, yes. Uh, well, the Edge that shipped with Windows uh, 10, the first version of Windows 10, is yes, it is Internet Explorer 12 minus all the legacy stuff and with a total new UI. Uh, Edge that shipped with Windows uh, 10, the November update, the engine you could say is the Internet Explorer 13 engine and vice versa um, for the uh, Edge for the universe, Windows 10 anniversary update, the rendering engines will be Edge HTML version 14, which follows Internet Explorer 11, which is 11, 12, 13, 14. Um, 
Uh, anyway, so yes, uh, the answer to the question, yes, Edge is Internet Explorer. At the same time, it is not. It is totally written from scratch. So uh, I hope that makes sense. The UI is written from scratch. The engine is a following of Internet Explorer minus all the old stuff. Okay, so that's one question. Uh, the next question is um, people ask is okay edge is a new browser it, it's written in the universal windows platform um, so the, the they ask is why then um, edge needs to wait for windows update to get new features and updates uh, why can't edge be installed through or updated through the windows store like most universal windows platform well, that's a, I, I get this question. I hear this question all the time. I see it in the forums. I see it in the comments of other websites, uh, and I see it by other tech journalists um, that wonder, well, legitimately wonders, like why can't it be updated through the Windows Store? Because it is a universal Windows app, and um, I think Microsoft even promised, not publicly. I think they talked about it internally um, that my Edge would be updated through the Windows Store. But it's, it is not. It can't be updated through the Windows Store. Um, it's, there, it's, the reason for this is uh, it's actually pretty, pretty uh, simply when you look into it. Uh, basically, most universal Windows apps are sandboxed. And if not sandboxed, they're, they're installed as uh, in a separate directory in the program files folder. Uh, so y when you install a universal Windows app, UWP app, uh, it goes into your C, C directory, C program files, and a folder called Windows Apps. So if you ma if you download an app called, say, Hello World from the Windows Store, it'll be downloaded to your C drive inside the program files drive, inside a folder called Windows Apps, and inside that folder, a folder will be created th by the name, the publisher name, dot, the name of the app, Hello World, and in there the program would exist and when the store installs that app all they have to do is install that app there and when they want to delete that all they have to do is delete that folder and it's gone so that's how the store manages the folder it updates the that's how it installs and updates the apps um, and you could and it, and, and th that's how many of the built-in Windows Store apps or universal apps are installed uh, when you for example when you first install Windows 10 there's an alarms app there's also a uh, there's also uh, what do you call it a uh, calculator there's also uh, music a uh, group music movies and TVs those apps uh, although you can't just right click them and uninstall them because Microsoft disabled it by default since they're installed like a normal Windows Store app or a universal app you could just go to the you could use the PowerShell to use a remove comment and the Windows PowerShell console will actually delete the folder from that Windows app directory and it will be uninstalled like a normal universal app and that's why those built-in apps can be updated through the Windows Store and so how about Microsoft Edge um, actually Microsoft Edge is a system app and it's like um, like another other few uh, there's few other universal Windows apps uh, UWP apps uh, such as Cortana Windows Feedback or Feedback Hub app there's other few uh, other apps like uh, contact support that are not installed like a universal Windows app. Uh, they are installed in a different directory. They're actually installed in your C drive and the Windows folder. And in there, that's where the apps apps lie. So for Microsoft Edge, uh, it it's actually in your Windows folder. So to get Microsoft Edge, you'd have to go to the Windows folder and then uh, in your C drive. And then in the Windows folder, there's a folder called System Apps. And there you'll see lots of um, uh, modern apps or universal Windows apps that are not ma maintained by the store, that are actually installed by Windows. And those include Microsoft Edge. You'll find a folder called um, Microsoft Edge or Microsoft.Edge. Um, so, and there's other other apps like Contact Support, Insider Hub, Account Control, uh, Lock Screen app. Yeah, and there's also, um, I don't know, um, Xbox games app, the Xbox games bar, and uh, other stuff that that are essential for the system to run. Actually, not this for the system to run, but essential for the for Windows to no act, uh, behave how Microsoft wants it to behave. So this is why Windows Store cannot maintain and update Microsoft Edge. It's because it doesn't deal with Windows Store does not deal with the uh, 
the root Windows directory. It installs apps in the program files and it deletes apps from the program file. Uh, so, so uh, in that case, we have. Um, so this is why uh, when you need to update Microsoft Edge, you actually have to uh, you run Windows Update. So all the security features and new bug fixes or even new features come through the Windows Update, which actually does update the system files in the root directory. So this is why Microsoft Edge cannot be updated through the Windows Store, and that's one of the big questions I get. Yes, it is a universal Windows platform app, but it's a different universal Windows platform app. It's actually a system app. In, in fact, it has it's not even sandboxed. It has full system access. It can do um, all, basically anything that a, a normal desktop app can do. Uh, it, it, it basically is a better, a bigger app. So, um, so thank you for uh, uh, taking the time to un understand that. If you don't understand, please let me know by comments. Email me at anasmus@outlook.com. You could leave if, this, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, you could leave a comment below. Um, I'll, I'll definitely I'll help. I'll be happy to answer your questions. Um, thank you. So uh, I, I hope that helps. Now, if uh, this would be the uh, end of the podcast for today, I talked a bit about the history of Microsoft Edge and why it cannot be updated to the Windows Store. I'll definitely talk about other st uh, other things related to Microsoft Edge in other podcasts in the future, uh, other episodes actually. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions or comments, please uh, of course let me know. I would love to hear what you think. So this is the Nasmus Labs podcast, uh, episode one, recorded on April tenth of twenty sixteen. I'm Nazma Shagim Kandikar, and I hope you have a great day.